Medea, I wanted to ask you as a, about your experience organizing and what you think can make a difference about um, in, in trying to get people to pay attention to this story. Uh, if you have any advice, besides obviously the phone calls and the emails that we're all going to do. And in fact, either during this segment or during a break, we should do them, Jen. And if any of you want to do them to show what it's like, you can do yeah, them well, right. we'll, we'll, Yeah, we don't need to put people on the spot just yet. We, let's, no, let's, I'm not we'll, putting them we'll on the spot. I'm saying if they, not now, if anyone wants right, to do okay. them, just let us know in the chat or whatever, and we'll give you the chance to do that, but no pressure. Um, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not asking Medea to do that now. But Medea, no. what I will ask you to do, if you don't mind, is share your organizing experience and any ideas you have for how to make sure that people do care about this and do demand um, that justice be served, basically, for... Uh, Julian. Well, thank you for doing this because this is one of the great ways to get people to care about the issue and learn about the issue. And it's great to be on with Kevin and John. Um, my um, connection to Julian Assange is really through the information that he exposed. And as an activist, and I think in terms of getting people uh, to get active in this, um, there were hundreds of thousands, if not millions of activists who protested against the Iraq war. Um, they should recognize that it was thanks to Julian Assange that we learned so much about the horrific effect of that war. When I first saw the collateral murder video, I remember we played it. We even um, had it on, on screen so we would go around to the homes of uh, people in power and, and project it. Um, the uh, files of not only Iraq, but Afghanistan taught us so much about what our government was doing. The uh, Guantanamo files, I mean, now there's still a, a, a group that's been active all these years to try to close Guantanamo. They should also be um, part of this effort to free Julian. I think uh, among the issues for which Julian has gotten a bad rap, it's ones among the liberal community. And as you know, it was the release of the information about uh, Hillary Clinton and the DNC files and John Podesta's files right before the election that really uh, got him the, uh, the, the, the hatred um, uh, from a lot of uh, Democrats. I think we have to explain to people that uh, Julian's job and the job of a good journalist is just to expose things, the truth, uh, no matter what side is going to be hurt by it. Let's remember he also exposed um, uh, information about Sarah Palin. Uh, he not only uh, pissed off governments that were uh, the uh, around Iraq and Afghanistan, but also around the Arab world in general, the corruption of the Arab world that really helped to spark the Arab Spring. Uh, he exposed the um, uh, scandals within the Turkish government. He exposed scandals in Peru. Um, he exposed the um, uh, the uh, issues in uh, uh, in Iceland um, that led to a lot of uh, shakeup within the government there. Um, extrajudicial extrajudicial killing by the police in Kenya. Um, when you are somebody. And, and an organization that exposes all of these things, you're gonna make a lot of enemies along the way. And that's what happened to Julian Assange. And so I think it's important uh, in terms of the low hanging fruit of people who should care about this is to get people even within the social justice movement to recognize uh, that exposing the truth is something that helps us even if it exposes things uh, about, um, uh, a group that we might be sympathetic towards or a, a government we might be sympathetic towards. Uh, and I um, think that in, in terms of the kinds of things we have to do, um, well, uh, I've been involved around Julian in a lot of the, the uh, protests that have been going on in England. And it's really great to see how they have branched out and brought people in from the government, like Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, they've brought people in from the, um, the world of uh, the artists and the, um, uh, and the writers. And uh, they've really reached out into a lot of different sectors of society. And I know we've done that for a, a certain extent here. Um, there are 
uh, people in the Hollywood scene like Oliver Stone that have come out very strongly in favor of Julian. Uh, but I think there's more we could do in terms of getting influencers to uh, speak out. And uh, then I agree with John, you know, it's a COVID time, so it's harder to get out on the streets and uh, do the kind of protests we need to do, uh, which is why it's even more important during these times to uh, do the calling and the emailing uh, and the online kind of activists, the tweeting and the Instagrams and the TikToks and everything we can do in the social media uh, to get people to know and care about this issue. So I just want to you know, say thank you for the kind of educational work you're doing with this uh, almost day long uh, webinar and uh, uh, well, it's not a webinar, is it? What do you what do you call it, Katie? I'm You're, calling it a it's a live stream telethon. Live stream yeah. telethon, and I love yeah. that there's an action component to it, and I will certainly do it uh, during uh, this time. And I encourage everybody who's listening uh, to not only absorb new information that you can help spread the word to other sectors uh, that might not know enough about Julian and might just have heard. Uh, Rachel Maddow or uh, somebody else that, that you might um, mm. uh, like as a, a broadcast journalist trashing him. Um, but uh, you also have to uh, put the, the, the focus on our uh, elected officials. And I just wonder, I don't know, um, who of our elected officials, is there anybody in Congress who's already come out openly in favor of releasing Julian? I have not seen anybody. No, uh, the closest seen. I've seen, the closest I've seen is Nina currently running. She actually just put out something wow. um, supportive of Julian Assange. And I actually would have probably told her not to do that. Yeah, but she, really she did a few days ago. Yeah. Um, and that's the closest I've seen. I haven't seen anybody sitting in Congress that has spoken out in favor of Julian Assange. And why would you have told uh, her not Ni to do Nina, it? That's Nina Turner for people that I, know. You know, I would, I would say once she's in, she should let it all fly. But I think right now the goal is just to get her in there. And she's got a very short little span here between now and election day. So just like sort of from a political perspective, that's actually why I, when I messaged her about this, I um, was very clear. Like, I don't think this would be a good move for her. I just, I, I think that not yet. Um, yeah, so that yeah. would just be, you know, just caution. Yeah, I see what you mean. But people who are already uh, in Congress, exactly. we should yes. definitely be pushing yes. them not only in what we write to them, but but also really trying to get them to be public, uh, to put out some information, some statements, a tweet or something. Uh, because if you compare all of the people in the uh, British Parliament and the Labour Party, for example, there are lots of them who have come out uh, publicly. And to compare that to the U.S., where uh, the our, it's our government trying to extradite him and charging with so many uh, different uh, charges that it could be 175 years in prison. I mean, we should certainly be getting people, and not just Democrats, libertarians. You know, yeah. certainly people like Rand Paul. Um, yes, uh, we should be pushing them to come out. And I was trying to. We were jokingly kind of, but trying to get. Um, Trump to own the libs before he got out of power by yeah. uh, pardoning by uh, pardoning Assange. What else? We were wanted him to. What 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 is the ask for you, John? I'm sorry. The legal. Yeah, it's too, it was, it was pardon. You know, there's a little bit of a story to there you, too. Even though you're, yeah, we, we had we had asked for Assange, Snowden, and me, and um, you know, I hired a, a lobbyist and and I had some reach into the White House. Tucker Carlson sort of ad adopted my cause. And um, I, I really believed I was going to get it. I, I actually believed for a little while that all three of us were going to get it. And then what I heard from a, a well-placed person at the White House is that it was Mitch McConnell that called over and said, if you pardon these three, you're going to lose the impeachment trial. And so none of us got it. Wow. Oh, that Mitch McConnell, yeah. always there with so such a helping hand. That he wasn't, he didn't such a helper. Yeah. He's, yeah. He did, gives a terrible name and does terrible PR for turtles, by the way. So uh, <laughs> I just want to say that not all turtles. Um, and one other thing I would just want to point out is that if publishing this information were so treacherous, then we really need to be going after the New York Times, the Guardian, everyone who reported on these stories, because you, know, you have to be consistent. And either it was not uh cautious not prudent 
to cover these things, which I would, of course, disagree with. But if that is the argument for why Assange is such a, you know, a, a disreputable person, um, such a pariah, then fine, but also go after the places that publish this. And um, it's also incredibly infuriating that much like John, you were the only person to go to jail over CIA torture. Um, we have not torturers. Just the person who exposes the torture. <laughs> that's because that's logical. No, right, right, right. That's what I'm saying. He was the only right, right, right. No, but he didn't yeah. do it. But I'm saying from the revelations right. about the torture, the only person who was punished was the one who revealed it, not the ones who engaged in it. And um, uh, likewise, you know, there Manning and Assange helped bring to light the collateral murder video, which again, no one is talking about. The fact that there was captured on video the um, like really brutal. Um, sh killing of uh, civilians, of members of the press, of the people who try to help the people after. I mean, literally, you have this on video. They're trying to help the people who were shot, and they decide to shoot those people too. And they're they're animate, you know, they're narrating it in a way as if it's a video game. And no one wasn't got in trouble for that, except for the people who helped expose that. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.